It's no secret that I'm a sucker for modern software that pushes the Commodore 64 to its absolute limit. And boy do I have something neat to show you today. I'm Matt D'Amico, and welcome to episode 74 of Retro Bits. Today, we're going to look at what's been called an experiment that got out of hand. This is RetroTerm, client software designed to connect to a Telnet BBS on a PC or Raspberry Pi that supports the new proprietary Turbo 56K protocol. Now, I'll show you the hardware setup in a bit, but first, let's connect to a BBS. The Turbo 56K protocol was created by Jorge Castillo in order to provide high-speed file transfers on the C64. Like other terminal emulators, it can reach speeds of about 1800 bits per second on an NTSC machine and 1500 bits per second on a PAL machine when the screen is active. With the display turned off, however, It can achieve transfer speeds up to 57K when the CPU is fully dedicated to serial bit banging and with the use of hardware flow control. In addition, Pablo Roldan developed the Retro BBS software that we're connected to right now and helped extend the Turbo 56K protocol. Over time, the software's capability grew to include PCM and SID audio streaming, graphic support, and more. So let's take a look now at some of those capabilities, starting with the file and streaming section. And one other thing to note is that the sound effect that plays when text is rendered is a homage to war games, but um, I'm gonna turn it off for the duration of this video using the Commodore and M key. So let's start by taking a look at the image gallery here. And one interesting thing to note is that the server itself controls the switching of the screen modes of the client. So before its current embodiment as a terminal emulator, the software was initially conceived to allow remotely controlled multimedia presentations on the C64. So what we're seeing here is some of that carried over into the terminal. But check out just how quickly it can download a properly formatted Commodore image to your terminal, it's just like that. And in addition to that, it can also take images that aren't Commodore formatted. Here we've got a high resolution JPEG image and we can decide what mode we want the server to present it to us in. And we'll just convert it on the fly. And there you go. So the color palettes don't necessarily work for every automatically translated image. They're not the best, but it's kind of neat. So let's try one more here. Yo, M. Another JPEG image here. And that must be one of the, the BBS owners or one of the software developers. I'm not sure given the name of the file, but yo. So here we are back at the menu, and the next thing I wanted to show you was the SID streaming capability. So here we go, a list of SID files that are hosted on the BBS, and we can just pick one. Let's uh, pick, I don't know, Ghost and Goblins Remix. There's some info about it, any key to stop. So 
So that's pretty cool. Imagine being able to hear a SID in real time without having to download, extract, and load it into a player like in the old days, just to sample what that song was going to sound like. This way you can hear it in real time almost, right away, without any of that runaround. Things get even more interesting over here in the PCM streaming section. The Turbo 56K protocol can stream real-time PCM digital audio at 4 bits, 11 kilohertz, with no duration limit. So I'm going to demonstrate that now, but I might not be able to show you much because it may uh, incur a copyright strike on YouTube, but we'll see. Yeah, notice how fast that starts up. There's almost no lag and no buffering. It just jumps right into it, real time. Now, bit banging 576K over the user port plus the real time playback is all done by the C64's one megahertz CPU. There are no modern hardware upgrades here at all besides either a user port Wi-Fi modem or a period correct Turbo 232 serial interface. At that data rate, there are only 17 clock cycles on average, six instructions for the processor to handle each data bit received. The CPU must be dedicated to the task of reading from the serial port, keeping sync with the data, and passing each 4-bit sample along to the SIDS volume register. Pretty amazing stuff given there's no extra hardware going on here. It's all being done by the C64. Okay, we're back at the main menu of the BBS again, and another thing I wanted to show you was here under N, the radio section. What we've got here are streaming internet radio selections, uh, Icecast and Shoutcast, and so we can select any one of these. I'm going to select Slay Radio. Hopefully we don't get a copyright strike here. Yep, and just like that, we're listening to streaming radio on the internet. Now, I used to run a Shoutcast radio for something like 20 years, so this is this is really amazing for me to, to think that, you know, I could have my radio station being played back live and in real time on a Commodore 64. It just, it just blows my mind. Can you imagine listening to a fully digitized song on your C64 back in the day. Not just a sample, but a fully digitized song from start to finish. Now take that and then imagine a real-time continuous stream of digital audio from the internet that goes on and on. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. It just blows my mind. And in addition to Shoutcast and Icecast, I believe the server software also supports Spotify. I don't see it on this BBS in particular, but I read that that is supported capability as well. So the next thing let's take a look at is the capability of searching Wikipedia. So we can put in any search term we want about Commodore 64 and it'll give us all of the results and we can choose any one of these options. So let's just hit A for Commodore 64. And one of the neat things that it does is it will pull the first image for the Commodore 64 from Wikipedia and then it'll jump right into the article and we can page through the full text of the Wikipedia entry for Commodore 64, pretty cool. Another neat option from the main menu is the NASA astronomy picture of the day. We'll just hit J for that. And we can read the article 
And we can also display the image that goes along with the article. Didn't convert particularly well, but still pretty neat. And then if we hit enter, we move on to a next random article, not in time, but uh, just some random article that they've got. And we can just continue going through random articles and random images one at a time. Oh, that's pretty neat. I don't know what we're looking at exactly, but uh, okay, cool. The next neat feature is the ability to look at certain customized news feeds. Let's take a look at that real quick. So these are all kind of retro news feeds. We can look at Commodore News, which is a pretty cool site. If you don't check that one out, you should because it's updated very frequently with all the latest stuff. And of course, we've got Indie Retro News. So let's just, uh, let's start with that. And there we go, we've got an index of all the things. Look at that, I have the Beholder C64128. That just came out yesterday and they've already got an article about it. If you haven't seen the Eye of the Beholder video on Retrobits, check that out next, or just download it and try it out yourself. <laughs> there we go, we've got an image from the article. Looks a little better in person. And there's the article. Very cool. Something you may have noticed from the main menu is this YouTube option, so let's take a look at that now. Before you get your hopes up, there are some things that are beyond the capability of the Commodore 64's 1 MHz CPU. Streaming real-time video is one of those things without the help of additional hardware bolted into, you know, the expansion port, for example. But there are some things that you can do with a modem, and one of them here is to view snapshots from live streams. So let's check out a snapshot from the ISS live stream. Okay, yeah, colors aren't great, but it's pretty clear that that is what it is. How about we'll take a look at Times Square next. Yep, once again, the colors are not great, but it's pretty recognizable what it is we're looking at here. And finally, let's take a look at Venice, shall we? Now, I've looked at this throughout the day, um, and it does change. We have day-night cycles. These aren't static images. They are pulling them live off of the webcam. So there we go, a nighttime shot of Venice. So it is nighttime there now when I'm filming this during the afternoon here. Let's pull up another frame from Venice. If I go back and visit it again, we should get a, another frame because it is a live stream and it is cycling through different cameras. There we go. We've got a nighttime shot of Venice uh, from the Rialto Bridge, it looks like. Uh, actually it looks pretty good in this converted format. And if we go back to the menu, you're gonna see we have some other options to grab random frames from static videos. And then we can also listen to YouTube audio channels. Again, just like the Shoutcast or Icecast, it is just going to show us, um, it's just going to play back the audio. There's not gonna be any video. Still pretty neat. And now we get to my absolute favorite feature of the Turbo 56K protocol and the retro term is the download section here in the file library, which we skipped earlier. Now on a traditional BBS, you'd enter the download section and you'd see all of the files available for download to your disk. Here, we have files that are available for download, but we're not gonna write them to disk. So let's pick one, there's a lot of good stuff here, but um, I'm gonna choose IK+, that's a great game. So I'm gonna hit Z, and what's gonna happen is instead of downloading to the disk, it's downloading to the system's main memory. RetroTerm only occupies 6.5K of main memory, so anything else that can fit in the remainder can be downloaded, and at the 57.6K transfer rate, it downloads very, very quickly. In fact, there, it's done. I've downloaded the entire game into RAM. And now, let's log out of the BBS gracefully. So I'll go back one menu, and I'll hit X to log out. Are you sure? Yes. And now all I have to do is hit run stop to exit the terminal to basic. 
and now I can just type run. And the software that we downloaded from the BBS is resident in memory, and it'll fire right on up. Hopefully by now you're asking, how can I try this out myself? Don't worry, I've got you covered. First, you'll need the RetroTerm client software, which you can find on the projects page at pastbytes.com. Note there are different versions of the software depending on which RS-232 device you plan on using. You'll also need the address of a Turbo 56K board to call, and at this time there are only a few available. I put links to the software and BBS list in the description below. Now, let's take a look at the different hardware options you can use to get connected. All right, so how do we connect to a Turbo 56K BBS using RetroTerm? Well, there are a number of options, and the first one is to use a user port Wi-Fi modem such as this one. Now, you're going to need one that runs the popular Zim modem firmware by Bo Zimmerman, and you must set the port speed to 56K, or 57.6K, and enable RTS-CTS flow control. This is a Y modem, and it does have hardware flow control, and it does have the necessary port speeds, but it isn't currently supported by the RetroTerm software. I was able to get it to connect, but there's some timing issues, and so I got a lot of garbage in addition to the, uh, the data being sent over to the Commodore. So you're going to need a Zim modem firmware Wi-Fi modem. That's your first option. The next option for getting online is the Turbo 232, and this is a replica of the original period correct Turbo 232. This is made by GG Labs, it's called the G-Link 232T, and it connects to the Commodore's cartridge port and provides a 9-pin serial connection using a high-speed UART that allows you to reach port speeds of 57.6K and above on your Commodore 8-bit. Now, the RetroTerm software is provisioned to use the Turbo 232, but it's only been tested in Vice emulation. It has not been tested against real hardware. So, I tried it with real hardware. I took my laptop and I installed the TCP SIR software, and then I connected the laptop using this USB serial port to the Turbo 232. That allowed me to bridge the serial connection to the internet and dial out to Telnet BBSs at 57.6K using traditional terminal emulator software. However, I was unable to get RetroTerm to work. It would uh, speak to the modem to some degree, but it uh, would send out and connect to boards, but it wasn't able to receive data back. So some work yet to be done there perhaps, but it works great in emulation such as Vice, which we'll look at in a moment. Since I don't have a Zim modem Wi-Fi modem and I was unable to get the Turbo 232 to work, I had a third option and that's this, the 1541 Ultimate 2 Plus cartridge, which I reviewed extensively on this channel before. In a recent firmware update, it enabled the physical Ethernet connection to be used as a SwiftLink cartridge, which is kind of like a budget version of the Turbo 232. It operates at a maximum port speed of 38.4K, not 57.6, but RetroTerm has a version that supports the Ultimate 2 Plus's SwiftLink emulation. And so that's what I used for the making of this video, and I will show you how to set that up now. All right, so here we are on our Commodore 64 for our 128 and 64 mode with the 1541 Ultimate 2 Plus installed. We press the menu button to bring up the menu, and the first thing we wanna do is hit F2, 
go down to network settings and ensure that your network is properly set up and you are connected to your physical network. With that done, hit F2 again and go to modem settings. Now here we want to enable the Swift Link emulation. And so we go down here to ACIA mode and we want DE00 slash NMI. That is the option that you want enabled to allow RetroTerm to see this device. And that's really the only thing that you need to change when configuring it from the default settings. So we're gonna write those settings to flash. All right, after power cycling the machine to make sure the changes have taken effect, I'm going to go into the flash storage on my cartridge where I've stored a copy of RetroTerm for the Swift Link. I'm going to DMA load that into memory. I'm gonna type run. And here we go, there is RetroTerm for Swift Link at 38.4, working perfectly fine with the Ultimate 2 Plus. Finally, let's take a look at how to connect using the Vice emulator. I'll start by firing up the latest version for Windows. Next, I'll load up the latest version of the Retro Term for user port modems in the emulator. And there we go. The terminal is up and running, so let's configure the modem. Go into Preferences, Settings, and expand Peripheral Devices. What we want is the RS-232 serial port settings. Now, before we enable the user port modem, let's configure the device. You can define whichever port you want, but I'll just replace COM1 with the hostname and port of the BBS I want to call. Set the baud rate to 57.6K and make sure the user port device points to the serial device you just configured and at the same port speed. Now, all we have to do is enable the modem and, just like that, we're connected. Welcome connection to VBS. That still blows me away every time I see it. If you're interested, the Python based retro BBS software is freely available to download and play around with from the project's GitHub page. It goes into depth about the setup and available features, including the ones we didn't take a look at today, like message boards and internet relay chat. It got me thinking, could this software and its amazing capabilities have existed back in the day if higher speed connections were available to the average user? The digital audio content probably couldn't be hosted by an individual BBS sysop, but maybe the larger online services like Qlink that had access to powerful servers and storage could have pulled it off. It's an interesting thought exercise, but the reality is that 56K modems weren't available until the late 90s, so this probably wasn't feasible during the C64's heyday even if the software techniques had been developed back then. Fun to imagine, though. So there we have it, RetroTerm and the Turbo 56K protocol. Absolutely amazing stuff that none of us could have even imagined being possible back in the day. Well, it is now. I hope you enjoyed this bit. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hey there, if you enjoyed this video, why not toss us a like, subscribe, or leave a comment? It really helps us out. Thanks also to our awesome Patreon members whose names you're seeing now. Your support is greatly appreciated.